Welcome to Mojo Plays, Johnny here bringing you our picks for the worst boss fight from every Zelda game. For this list, we'll be looking at the boss battles from each of Link's adventures that fell short of our expectations. Whether it be a boring design or if the fight just wasn't that fun, these bosses are the low point of each game. What's your least favorite Zelda boss fight? Did they make the list? Let us know in the comments below. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Dig Dogger, The Legend of Zelda Bosses from the original game are naturally not going to be that impressive compared to later entries. Regardless, Dig Dogger was still a disappointment back then. Players fight the boss in the game's fifth dungeon, which is where they also find the recorder. All you have to do is play it as soon as you enter Dig Dogger's arena. It'll shrink down, letting you slay it almost instantly. Maybe you'll have to avoid some fireballs from the statues on the side, but Dig Dogger is quickly and easily dealt with. It feels more like a regular enemy than a boss. You do fight it again in level 7, where the recorder splits it into three, but it's still an easy fight. Rebonac, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Found in the game's third dungeon, Rebonac is a knight whose first phase has him charging at Link from either side of the screen. But while the rest of the game's bosses keep you on your toes, dodging Rebonac is really easy. You just hop and downward thrust to deal damage. And that isn't the only disappointing feature of the fight. After his horse runs off, Rebenak is just an iron knuckle. Maybe a little bit stronger since he has projectiles, but a souped up regular enemy nonetheless. It just isn't that interesting. And it isn't the last time Nintendo would include a regular enemy as a boss, but more on that later. Moldorm, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Moldorm made it onto our list of hardest bosses for the sheer annoyance and frustration it caused us. And that's exactly why we're putting it here as well. First found in the Tower of Hera, Moldorm has no attack pattern. It just slithers around its arena trying to bump into you. If it does, it can knock you right off the side of the platform, forcing you to climb back up a floor and face it at full health. If you fall through the hole in the center, then it's two floors. Difficulty through unfairness isn't a unique boss fight. What's worse is when you fight it a second time in Ganon's Tower, where if it knocks you off, you might fall into spike traps. Great. Anglerfish. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. The anglerfish gets negative points on two fronts. It isn't a distinctive boss look, and it isn't fun to fight. It's fought at the end of the game's fourth dungeon, so you'd think it would be a little tough. But it really doesn't put up much of a fight. Its obvious weak point is its bulb, which you can start slashing at right away. You can defeat the boss before it has the chance to attack, but even when it does, all it does is charge at Link and bring some boulders floating down. Needless to say, it's very easy to avoid. Also, it's just a fish. A big one but still just a fish. Morpha, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. After the Dark Link fight, we were expecting the tough water temple to end with an intimidating boss battle. What we got was basically a sentient swimming pool. Aside from water with a nucleus inside being just about the lamest design Nintendo could have gone with, the fight isn't that special either. All you have to do is grab the nucleus with the hookshot and wail on it. You don't even have to get close to the pool, just stand to the side and wait for your moment. The Water Temple is notorious amongst Zelda fans, but there's a reason that, within its notoriety, no one ever talks about the snooze fest of a boss. Odalwa, 
The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Odawa is far from the worst boss on this list, but when compared to Majora's other bosses, he definitely comes up short. Found in the Woodfall Temple, Odawa is an oversized jungle warrior, complete with a massive blade and shield. He seems intimidating compared to the tiny Link, and he'll annoyingly summon bugs to fight you. But he actually isn't very tough at all. Wait for him to attack or start dancing, yes, really, and stun with an arrow before using your sword. Or you can switch to Deku Link and use the flower in the center of the arena to avoid all of his attacks, drop a Deku Nut, and then let him have it. Odawa will go down in just a few moments. Dodongo, The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Seasons. Dig Dogger only just beat out Dodongo as the worst boss in the original game. But then Nintendo and Capcom paid homage to the 2D dino in Oracle of Seasons. Hooray! Similar to his original appearance, Dodongo's fight is pretty slow. He lumbers forward, not remotely being a threat. Once he opens his mouth, just toss a bomb inside. This version does have the extra step of picking him up and throwing him on the spike pit once he's swallowed a bomb, but making a bad boss fight last longer isn't exactly what we were hoping for. Pumpkinhead, The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages. While we shouldn't expect much from the first boss of a game, Oracle of Ages' pumpkin head has a cool design that's absolutely wasted. Maybe we're just big fans of Halloween, but when a ghostly figure with a jack-o'-lantern head is a boss, we expect something a bit spookier. Instead, Pumpkinhead takes damage from the sword like some regular old enemy. Sure, you have to throw the pumpkin to reveal his true form, but you still just stab him. Also, he only jumps and shoots a little fire, so even his moveset is a disappointment. Go in, The Legend of Zelda, Four Swords. Goen can be found at the end of this game's Death Mountain, and while his design of just a hopping fireball is certainly lackluster, it's the way you fight him that secures his spot on this list. He begins with a game of Dead Man's Volley, though it's much slower than when other bosses in the series use it. Color-coded to the different links, only one can knock it back to him at a time, and when it connects, he'll break into a bunch of little fireballs. Only one of them can take damage, but they all just sit there waiting for you to hit the right one rather than try to avoid you. Going, do you even want to win? <laughs> Godan, The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. We've all been there in one Nintendo game or another. A giant floating head with some giant floating hands. And while some bosses have improved on that tired design, Godan does not find himself in that group. It's immediately obvious what you're supposed to do, even if Godan is the first boss of this variety you've faced. Shoot his hand eyeballs, then his regular eyeballs. Admittedly, capping off the sequence by tossing a bomb in his mouth is a little more obtuse, but Godan is supposed to be the final challenge set up by the gods to test Link as a true hero. Maybe don't model it after something we've faced time and time again. Big Poe, The Legend of Zelda, Four Swords Adventures. Big Poe from Four Swords Adventures would have been a contender for his design alone. He's just Jalhala's head from The Wind Waker, but he also earns his placement due to the fact that most of his arena leads to his downfall. The battle begins with the four links lighting torches in each of the room's corners. 
Big Poe will then appear and immediately fly directly into the light, which stuns him and opens him up for sword attacks. While he releases minions every time he takes damage, he's easily defeated as long as you just stay by the torches. That is so lame. <laughs> Big Green Choo Choo, The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap. Like Rebenak before it, the Big Green Choo Choo is just a harder version of a regular enemy. But at least Rebenak was a jousting knight. The Big Green Choo Choo is, well, a big dumb blob. It's fought at the end of the game's first dungeon, Deepwood Shrine. Link must use the Gust Jar to suck away goop from its base so that it will fall over, allowing him to stab it. But the only reason it puts up even a fraction of a challenge is because Link is shrunken down to size. Overall, it's a pretty big cop-out of a boss. Armagoma, The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess. Giant spiders are frightening inclusions in a lot of fantasy properties, but Armagoma from Twilight Princess is a letdown to that legacy. It doesn't even try to fight Link directly, and given its size and number of legs, it definitely should have. But instead, it spins the fight crawling on the ceiling. All Link has to do is watch, shoot the eye on its back when it stops moving, and make a statue smush it with the Dominion Rock. Rinse and repeat. Even its spider babies and laser beam attack don't pose much of a threat. Considering Armagoma is the boss of the sixth dungeon, it should have made us work a lot harder. Cycloc, The Legend of Zelda, Phantom Hourglass. You've seen an iron knuckle ride a horse, but how about an Octorok riding a cyclone? Cycloc is found in the Temple of Wind, the game's second dungeon. You'd think that a boss with a mastery over wind would have some deadly attacks, but Cyclox's dive bombs and cyclone projectiles are pretty easy to read and then dodge. All you have to do is toss a bomb in his projectiles or one of the cyclones that frequently appears in the arena to knock him out of the sky and then stab him. It's a bit of a slow fight, most of which amounts to waiting around for the right time to attack. Fraz, The Legend of Zelda, Spirit Tracks. If Ocarina of Time's Twin Rova is a good example of a boss that shifts between fire and ice, then Fraz is the exact opposite. Found at the end of the game's second dungeon, Fraz will inflate himself and glow with the element he's about to attack you with. He gives you plenty of time to stop him, which you do by drawing the boomerang's path from the opposite element's torch to him. This opens him up to further attacks. But the overall fight is very repetitive. Even when Fraz changes up the fight by splitting into two or destroying the torches, your method of fighting him never changes. You barely even have to move from your spot before Fraz is toast. The Imprison, The Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword. In our hardest boss list, some of you pointed out that the Imprisoned is a lot easier if you forego attacking his feet and make your way up to his head. In our defense, we uh, didn't know that. But even if we had, the Imprisoned would still be an easy pick for worst boss in Skyward Sword. <laughs> Each of the three battles is a major annoyance, as he just isn't that fun to fight, and his design is one of the franchise's worst. His ugly fish body and his gross squishy toes aren't intimidating in the slightest, and made us groan every time he appeared. If this were a ranked list, the Imprisoned would sit comfortably at number one. <laughs> Knuckle Master, The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. 
By the time players reach the game's sixth dungeon, they've become more than familiar with Link's painting mechanic, which is why Knuckle Master is such a disappointing fight. The armored hand has two attacks, charge as a fist or slam the ground, but both of these are laughably easy to avoid. Just merge into the wall and you'll never take any damage. Once it charges and hits the wall, it will flip upside down and be open to sword attacks. It does begin to move faster and its ground slams can destroy parts of the floor, but again, the walls never go anywhere and you'll never be in any actual danger. Lady Maud, The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. Triforce Heroes was already pretty far from the best Zelda game, but it didn't end on the strongest note either. The first phase of this fight has you throwing other Links over to Lady Maud to deal damage, and the second has her throw an obnoxious temper tantrum while you hit her in the back. <laughs> Phase 3 is Dead Man's Volley, alternating colors in an easy pattern. And Phase 4 amounts to more Link throwing, albeit this time onto moving platforms. For a final boss, Lady Maud isn't very active, and it can be tedious to get through. Everything we don't like about the fight is just magnified if you're playing by yourself. Master Koga, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. When it comes to Master Koga, the problem comes from a disconnect of the awesome buildup and incredibly underwhelming follow-through. Throughout the game, players meet members of the Yiga clan, those who defected from the Sheikah to serve Ganon. But when you finally meet their leader, the guy is a bit of a joke. His surprising characterization, from his pot belly to his cowardly demeanor, isn't what we take issue with. That's actually pretty funny. But they didn't have to make his fight so easy. <laughs> All three phases revolve around getting his own boulders to fall on him. This could have been a great opportunity for Nintendo to throw us off with a goofy character who still provided a tough fight, showing how he got to be called Master. Instead, it's an overall letdown. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.